Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my player ratings for Manchester United's 3 1 win against Arsenal at Old Trafford. So I'll start with David De Gea. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Made some excellent saves to deny Gabriel Martinelli. One of Martinelli's chance is was a header. Don't forget Martinelli had a goal disallowed by VAR because in the build up Christine Eriksen got fouled by Martin Odegaard. It's very controversial. Uh, De Gea was obviously in goal in Manchester United's win against Leicester not so long ago. He is our first choice goalkeeper. Moving on to Diego Dalo, I'm going to also give him a 7 out of 10. Some of his link-up play was good. He showed some good attacking intent. And he was good defensively for large parts of the game. There was times where he struggled against Gabriel Martinelli. The Lowe's enjoying a pretty good season. He's our first choice right back under Eric Ten Hag. He was also our first choice right back under Ralph Rangnick. There's no way back now for Anne wan -Bissaka. Anne wan -Bissaka as uh, injured anyway. I think Delo could still leave Man United next year. His contract expires next year. Manchester United did get Delo from Porto, paid nineteen million, brought him in under the Jose Mourinho era. At one point Delo had a loan spell with AC Milan. I'm reflecting on that again some experience. Moving on to Rafael Varan. I'm also going to give him a 7 out of 10. Uh, looked well composed at the back. He brought the ball out well from the back. And the thought defensively did well. Varane's doing well this season. He endured an average first season. Um, don't forget Varane's had quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player. You know, Manchester United did sign Rafael Varane from Real Madrid. He's under contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option to extend for the further year. Uh, Lisandro Martinez, I'm also going to give him a 7 out of 10. Solid performance, I thought. He kept the possession well, brought the ball out well from the back. He's doing really well for Manchester United, is Martinez. Don't forget, this is his first season at United. Uh, Martinez and Varane are our first choice centre halves, and they do complement each other well in our back line. Manchester United signed Lissandro Martinez from Ajax in a deal worth £57 million. He's under contract with the club until 2027. There's an option of an additional year. Don't forget, uh, Martinez can be deployed as a midfielder, but he's predominantly a centre-half. Uh, moving on to Terrell Malassia. I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Not the best of performances by Malassia. He had good moments in the game. I thought he struggled coming up against Bakayo Saka. I thought Saka was causing Malassia problems throughout the game. Uh, Terrell Malassia is Manchester United's first choice left back, so reflecting on that, you know, there's no way back for Luke Shaw. Uh, Luke Shaw recently had a knock, but he's now come back from that knock. Uh, Man United got Malassia from Feyenoord, got him for 13 million. Um, he's under contract with Man United till 2026 as an option of a further 12 months. Uh, 
Uh, moving on to Scott McTominay. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. He enjoyed a good game. I thought McTominay looked good on the ball, made some good runs. I think he committed, was it, a few fouls in the game. Um, he did get a yellow card, by the way. I was actually surprised that McTominay started. You know, I thought Casemiro was going to start ahead of McTominay. I thought it was going to be Casemiro and Eriksen in midfield. But obviously it was McTominay playing alongside Eriksen. McTominay has had some good games this season. He has been part of the club for a long time. Revert back to 2020, he committed his future to Man United because he signed a five-year contract. Uh, moving on to Christian Eriksen. He's going to get an 8 out of 10. Eriksen was involved in all of three of Manchester United's goals. Uh, Christian Eriksen, of course, got an assist. Eriksen's done really well since he came to Manchester United. Manchester United did sign Eriksen on a three transfer. When Eriksen officially signed, he signed a three-year contract. Um, Eriksen, I think, did get a yellow card in the game yesterday. Uh, moving on to Bruno Fernandes, he's going to get a 7 out of 10. Bruno Fernandes did get an assist for one of Marcus Rashford's goals. Um, it was a lovely through ball by Bruno Fernandes for the Rashford second goal. And Fernandes was unlucky not to score. <laughs> Um, he had a good chance that produced a good save for Aaron Ram Ramsdale, but that chance came from a poor clearance from Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, Fernandez is doing well this season. Don't forget he scored a very good volley in Man United's 1-0 win against Southampton. You know, Fernandez looks a far superior player when Ronaldo doesn't start or doesn't play at all. But when, you know, Fernandez and Ronaldo play together, we can't seem to get the best out of Fernandez. Which doesn't really make sense because Fernandez and Ronaldo played together for Portugal. You know, Fernandez has been a United player for over two years. Manchester United got him from Sporting Lisbon back in January 2020. He's got a contract with Man United till 2026 as Fernandez. Moving on to Anthony. He's going to get an 8 out of 10. Anthony scored on his Manchester United debut. It was a finest place finish in the six yard box. It was Rashford that picked him out. And there was moments in the game where Anthony showed his skills off. I didn't think Anthony was going to start yesterday. I thought he was going to come off the bench and make his home debut. Uh, Man United did sign Anthony from Ajax for around £86 million. That was with add-ons included. Anthony is Manchester United's second most expensive signing ever and is the fourth most expensive signing in Premier League history. Anthony is under contract with Man United till 2027. There's an option of an additional year. Uh, Jaden Sancho, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Don't think he was as good as he has been in recent weeks. He showed some 
fluid, didn't he, at times. Uh, Sancho, of course, scored in Manchester United's 1-0 win against Leicester. He also scored in Man United's 2-1 win against Liverpool. At Old Trafford, he played very well in that one. But, you know, we are now starting to get the best of Jadon Sancho. You know, we've been getting glimpses of what he was like when he was at Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Man United signed Sancho from Dortmund in a deal worth £78 million. With add-ons included, he's under contract with Man United till 2026 as an option of an additional year. Moving on to Marcus Rashford. He's going to get a 9 out of 10. Uh, Rashford scored twice for Manchester United yesterday. He also scored twice against Arsenal on his Premier League debut back in February 2016. Rashford's first goal yesterday was a counter-attack. Like I mentioned earlier, it was a splendid ball by Fernandes to pick him out and it was a good finish by Rashford in the end. I thought it was a bit similar to the goal he scored against Liverpool, Rashford, at Old Trafford. And Rashford's second goal was a tapping. Obviously, Christine Eriksen picked him out. And Rashford, of course, got an assist in the game for Anthony's goal. Rashford also made some very good runs, very energetic, energetic, looks very good on and off the ball. And hopefully now Rashford can persist with these performances. Don't forget at one point Rashford had an operation on his shoulder and he missed the first two months, was it, of last season with that shoulder problem. And he did struggle in a lot of games, but now, you know, we're starting to get the best out of him. Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven, and he broke into our senior squad back in 2016. Since then, he's gone to make over 300 appearances for the club. So Rashford obviously was playing up top yesterday. Uh, Man United brought substitutions on in the game. Uh, we saw Cristiano Ronaldo come on. I'll give him a 7 out of 10. He did all right, to be fair, when he came on. Uh, Ronaldo has accepted that he will be staying until January. Uh, not so long ago, Eric Ten Hag did say that he expects Cristiano Ronaldo to stay at Man United. We saw Harry Maguire come on. Give him a 6 out of 10. Um, he did receive a yellow card, by the way, when he came on. Uh, Maguire has not started the last, what, four or five games now for Man United. And Man United look a far superior team. And we look far superior, you know, when Ronaldo doesn't start. Uh, Fred came on in the game. Give him a 6 out of 10. And we saw Casemiro come on. And I thought he made an impact when he came on. Um, looked good in possession. Uh, positioning was quite good. Um, like I said early on in the video, I thought Casemiro was going to be starting. Uh, Manchester United signed Casemiro from Real Madrid in a deal worth £70 million. The initial fee was £60 million. There was a further £10 million in add-ons. Uh, Casemiro, when he officially signed, he signed a four-year contract with an option of an additional year. So anyway, that is your player ratings from Manchester United's 3-1 win against Arsenal. To be honest with you, though, I thought Arsenal put a very good performance out. You know, Arsenal had a lot of chances in that game yesterday.
but they just weren't clinical enough. You know, as for Manchester United, you know, when they got the chances, they converted them. Arsenal's equaliser came from Bikayo Saka. De Gea couldn't do anything about that. I thought Bakayo Saka had a very good game for Arsenal. I've always said that I highly rate him. I also like Saka for England. Uh, Gabriel Martinelli also had a very good game for Arsenal. Um, he was unlucky to have that goal disallowed because it was a good finish. And I've said, um, a lot of Arsenal fans have said that goal should have stood. I thought it was a foul, but Eriksen did go down softly, didn't he? Uh, there was no contact on the ball by Odegaard. Uh, Martinelli you know, had a very good headed chance that produced a good save from David De Gea in that first half. Uh, Gabriel Jesus also played very well for Arsenal. He's had a good start to his Arsenal career. Scored around five, six goals, is it? Arsenal did get Jesus from Man City. I thought Lekonga had a good game for Arsenal. Uh, ben White didn't do too bad. Um, he was playing at right back, was Ben White. Um, I think he played at right back when he was at Brighton a few times, but obviously he's predominantly a centre back, is Ben White. Um, Aaron Ramsdale, um, he didn't have much to do in the game. I think he had one save to make the whole game. I mentioned that earlier on. Aaron Ramsdale's just come back from injury, hasn't he? Arsenal got him from Sheffield United. Um, I think Arsenal had, what, three players missing yesterday. That was Thomas Partey, who is one of the best players Arsenal have got. They had Rhys Nelson missing. He's a good young player. And Mohamed El Nene was missing as well. So there were the injuries. Odegaard, I don't think he was too good for Arsenal yesterday. I thought he struggled and he committed that foul. That built, it, that built up to the disallowed goal. Odegaard has just come back from a knock. So from an Arsenal perspective, I would be disappointed because they did put a good, good performance out but still lost the game. You know, it's Arsenal's first defeat of the season, but they still remain top. You know, Man United had some players missing yesterday. Obviously, there was no Bissaka, but he doesn't get in the team anyway. Obviously, there was no Martial. He's still injured. Martial's missed the last few games now. Luke Shaw was out of a knock, but he's not got the knock now. Brandon Williams is out, but he doesn't get in the team. Police is still out. He doesn't get in the team either. So there you go. But reflecting on the win against Arsenal, it was four wins in a row for Manchester United. And Man United, I think, are now fifth in the Premier League. You know, Manchester United beat Arsenal at Old Trafford last season. 3-2. Arsenal have a very bad record at Old Trafford. You know, I think Arsenal are still going to have a very good season. You know, they won't win the Premier League. But I think they're good enough to finish in the top four. They, they may win a trophy as well. You know, let me put into the equation that Arsenal have lost players. You know, they lost... Ainsley Maitland Niles, he went to Southampton on loan on deadline day. Hector Bellerin left Arsenal on a free transfer to go to Barcelona. They lost Pablo Mari. They lost Leno, who went to Fulham. Leno is Arsenal's former goalkeeper. And they also lost Pepe, he went out on loan. Pepe wasn't good, wasn't good enough for Arsenal anyway, he was too inconsistent. Arsenal did get him from Lille. Got him in a deal worth 70 million. And Arsenal lost Lucas Torreira. The lone noon no Tavares out. They lost the Bamiang, who was very good. A Bamiang went to Bas from Arsenal. Now a Bamiang's at Chelsea. He signed not so long ago. Uh, Lacazette left Arsenal. He went back to Leon. So there you go. 
And let me put into the equation that Manchester United have done transfer business with Arsenal before because we got Sanchez off them. And uh, back in 2012, got Robin Van Persie off them. Don't forget, Robin Van Persie won Man United the league back in 2013. He scored around 30 goals that season. Arsenal, don't forget, a lot of years ago, got Danny Welbeck from Man United. Mikel Arteta is the Arsenal manager. He's won the FA Cup so far as the Arsenal manager. Arsenal have won the most FA Cups. They've won around 14. Mikel Arteta's contract to Arsenal expires next year. Mikel Arteta got appointed in as the Arsenal manager back in December 2019. So he's been the Arsenal manager for almost three years. Before Arsenal, Arteta was an assistant coach at Man City. He worked alongside Pep Guardiola. At one point, Mikel Arteta was under serious pressure at Arsenal. The vast majority of Arsenal fans were demanding him out. Uh, before Arteta, Arsenal had Freddie Lundberg um, as the interim manager. Before then, they had Unai Emery, the sacked him. And before Arsenal had Arsene Wenger. Uh, Wenger endured 22 years as the Arsenal manager. Uh, like I said in the preview and the reaction, that Wenger had around 12 good years out of the 22 years he was there. So there you go. Manchester United and Arsenal... Back in the day, was the most iconic fixture. You know, when we had Sir Alex Ferguson and when they had Arsene Wenger. I liked the Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger rivalry. Don't forget, back in 2004, Arsenal went unbeaten all season in the Premier League. So, reflecting on that, they were the Invincibles. I still think Arsenal have got Stan Kroenke as the owner and for a number of years now Stan Kroenke has been criticised by a lot of Arsenal fans because you know he hadn't spent a penny in that club basically, he's used borrowed money, uh, same sort of thing with the Glazers at Man United, they hadn't spent a penny in the club, you know they've borrowed money. So there you go. Anyway, uh, Manchester United's next game is Real Sociedad in the Europa League group stage. It's our first game of the group. The preview will be coming up for, for that game either today or tomorrow. But yeah, um, Eric Ten Hag has now won four games as the Manchester United manager. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel if you do. Consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.